Hi, and welcome to Paracord Reviews. First off, I want to apologize for not recording last week. I caught that cold bug going around and lost my voice, and as you can guess, it's hard to record when you don't have a voice. So we're going to go ahead and do what I was planning on last week, and this week we're going to talk about Paracord. Specifically, we're going to talk about the types of Paracord available and how they're used and can be used and some do's and don'ts around them. So first off, what is Paracord? Well, it was originally developed as parachute cord to be used for paratroopers during World War II. The cord was developed as a suspension line of parachutes to withstand the weight of a paratrooper, along with the sudden jolt they will feel when the parachute is fully deployed. The original nylon cord was, des was desired due to its ability to not only handle large weight strain, but also lightweight, it was also lightweight and sturdy. The military is still using this cord today, and in fact, back in 1997, uh, Space Shuttle Discovery STS-82 was sent up to repair the Hubble telescope. And during it, there was some issues where they were needed to deploy a blanket to keep debris from going all over. And they used 35 feet of paracord to uh, help out. So even astronauts are using paracord. So I think if astronauts are using it, needless to say, everyone can use paracord for something. So let's talk about paracord. There are primarily four types of paracord. There are some others out there right now, but we're gonna primarily cover the four. Type one paracord is a lighter weight cord that can handle up to 95 pounds. It has one core braided thread and is mainly used for light duty things, such as maybe wrapping a knife handle or to tie items like flashlights or whistles for backpacking. Some people I know use this to make keychains and lanyards, which suits this cord perfectly. This cord would be comparable in strength to the Everbuilt cord that I reviewed on my first video. Type 2 paracord is not very common and can be hard to find. If you do an Amazon search, you will find it, but there's not a lot of variety. It is rated to handle up to 400 pounds and has anywhere between four to seven braided cords. Type 3 paracord is the most common. That's what I use for 90% of the things I do. This is sometimes referred to as type 550 or 550 paracord since it is rated, rated to handle 550 pounds. It will have seven to nine braided cores and this is the cord that, like I said, most of the time when you're buying paracord bracelets from someone like me or another vendor, they will use type three. We'll talk a little bit about how you can notice the difference later on. Type four paracord is not common, but it is available more so than say type two. Type four paracord is rated to handle up to 750 pounds. Although I have heard some say it can handle up to a thousand. I think it really depends, but I always go conservative, so I'm gonna say 750 pounds. It has 11 cores and is thicker than any of the other cores. I know one person who uses this cord with him when he hunts uh, to hang deer, as well as for his laces, for his boots. He figures it, that it can get wet, it, it won't break, and as far as um, for the deer, he figures if he gets something, he wants to field dress it right there, he can throw it over a tree and hang it, it'll handle it, it won't, he doesn't have to worry about it breaking if it snags or anything like that. Now let's compare sizes. As I told you, there are others out there. Micro is like a type one with no core, so it's just the sheath. Type 5 cord is made with a breaking force of 1,250 pounds. Um, it's really not common. I don't, I've never seen it except for online. I've never uh, seen it available at any military surplus stores or anything like that. As you can see, the different types have notable size difference. Type 3, which is once again what I primarily use, is about 4 millimeters in diameter. 
Now earlier I mentioned the Everbelt cord. The interesting thing there is that while the Everbelt cord is comparable in strength to the Type 1, the size of it is closer to the Type 3 or even 4. I don't know if they do this to try and, I hate to use the word sucker people, but I think they use this as a method of trying to sell the paracord that it looks similar to the actual stuff. And this, this just shows you that you may not always be able to know the size based upon the weight rate rating. And this is why I go out and buy different paracord types to determine just this type of thing. And I'll share that information with you guys. Now on this slide here you can see the differences between the cords when making knots. Comparing the salmon or cobra, or salmon, sorry not salmon, uh, comparing the salmon or cobra weave with the four different types, strands types, you can see a big difference between them. Just looking at the weaves, uh, you can see that the type 3 versus the type 1, the type 1 is uh, not only smaller in width, but it also has less of a gap uh, between the, thran uh, the threads. And uh, to me, I, I, I consider it almost like a tighter look. It looks tighter. Um, <clears throat> But uh, the, everything I've shown you so far is just the types, but there's also a difference between commercial grade, meaning what we normally use in military grade. And let's talk about that. So here you can see type three paracord. You can see the outer shell here, and it's most likely polyester. That is the common uh, thing for commercial grade. Some places won't call theirs paracord, they'll call it polyester cord, uh, but the, the sheath is generally for con consumer grade polyester. Sometimes you can find nylon. This one has seven strands, and when you pull apart the strands, you will see two yarns. Commercial grade usually only has two yarns per strand, so giving you 14 strands. Now, this is supposed to handle, as I said, up to 550 pounds, so it depends upon the strength of that strand. Now, how does this compare to military grade? Well, this here is military grade type three paracord. First thing is the outer shell is made of nylon. You will see that there are seven strands here, and one of them has a specific color. Depending upon the color, that delegates the ma uh, who the manufacturer is. So each manufacturer has an assigned color. And so if there's an issue with the paracord, they can open it up and see who the manufacturer was. Unlike the commercial grade though, these strands each have three yarns. So they will have, if it's a seven strands, they will have 21 individual yarns that are all put together. So three yarns make a strand and then seven strands. All of this is mandated in the military specifications, which are available online if you have any interest. So, paracord cord sounds like it can be used for everything, and it's partially true. While type three paracord is rated to handle 550 pounds, you have to understand that this rating is for dead weight, meaning static weight, not a, a load in motion. Also, knots and kinks or sharp angles can weaken the strength of the rope. So if, you know, wrapping something, that's fine. That's not a sharp angle. You're going around. But if you were to kink it somewhere, have it go at a, at a weird angle, or tying it in a knot, it uh, can weaken the strength. And using a standard working load rating, type three cord is met much lower than the 550 pounds. And probably safer to assume that you can hoist using one piece of paracord, 120 to 175 pounds with dry cord. Wet cord can actually uh, weaken it up a little bit. Now this assu also assumes that there is no manufacturer's issue. Now, this is why you cannot use paracord for, for climbing rope. And you'll see that on some of the bundles. It'll say this is not, do not use for climbing rope. Climbing rope is rated for 10 times the brake strength of type three cord. 
If you think about it, paracord was meant to be one of many ropes used for a parachute. The principle is the strength of many with each cord able to hold 550 pounds. And depending upon the parachute, there are at least 10 cords. Climbing ropes, it's just one rope and it has to be able to withstand the force of a person possibly falling and coming to a sudden jolt, all with one rope. Now with that said, type three paracord is great for a lot of things. For belts, I have found it to be superior to leather and that it's softer, it's more durable, it's more weather resistant. I like that uh, you don't necessarily have to punch holes in. If you're like me, you lose or gain weight, you're not having to adjust the holes, and I don't find that it wears, it doesn't show wear. It is good for multiple outdoor use, such as rigging a tent, hoisting an item, or tying down items. And while it not be, may not be able to pull a car, it has good outdoor uses, and for someone who may need a cord in an emergency situation, a single paracord bracelet can give you six feet of cord, if not more. In the case of one of the belts that I make, one of my standard belts can give you 50 plus feet of cord for a 40 inch belt. So paracord does have a lot of uses. I think it's great for the people, for outdoorsy people, anyone who may find themselves in a situation where they need a piece of rope or something like that. It's lightweight, it's fashionable. I think it's good to have all around. As a side note, I'll tell you this, I handed out candy this year during Halloween, it's probably how I got sick, and gave kids the choice of a paracord bracelet, paracord keychains, or candy. And as I have shown you, I had uh, been making up a lot of paracord bracelets, and I had about 30 bracelets, maybe a few more, and about 10 keychains made. I ran out of those bracelets and keychains before we ran out of candy. I had like one bag of, one big bag of the multi M&M things. Kids love them. There are a lot of nifty things you can do with paracord. And besides, it's a lot of fun. So until next time, everybody, keep paracording. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.